Hello, everybody. I'm so Hello. glad to be with all of you again. So nice to see you. Let me explain that for some time, I have been concerned about the fact that people mix up what the meaning of goals are because there is such a distinction between lifestyle goal and immediate goal. And if you're a therapist or counselor, it's important to know the difference in order that you can help the client better. The fact that Adler called his psychology individual psychology tells us there is a focus on the individual, but it needs to be remembered that for Adler, the name individual psychology doesn't mean that the emphasis is on the individual at the expense of the social environment in which the person lives. It is a fact that Adler was a social psychiatrist and unofficially he pioneered community psychiatry. <clears throat> the point I'm making is that Adler focused on the individual, but he didn't neglect the social milieu in which the person lived. What he did instead was to think of the individual as a whole and as a creative, undivided self embedded in a social community. Lifestyle, he described as a self-set inner core of personality of the individual. It represents a plan and a lifetime goal that shape the movement the person makes in her or his life. At the time that Adler did his work, the individual was not seen as a creative whole living in a social universe. And Adler put an emphasis on this whole and did not contrast it to social. He wanted to show that the individual took ideas from his life and created a plan and a movement for the rest of his life or her life. It's important to know the difference between immediate goals and lifestyle goal because there are many kinds of immediate goals that the individual has that are not necessarily related to lifestyle goal. Adler described each person as an artist who draws his own conclusions and paints a picture of what his life will be and the ideas that each of us in our early years draws conclusions and makes inferences about the world and about ourselves on the basis of those early experiences. So Adler was a cognitive psychologist before there was such a term. He was a social psychiatrist before there was such a term. And he said, children from their early experiences draw conclusions about what life is all about and how the person fits into life. And the painting that we each make is a creation of who we are, context of our social world. Because early childhood was so important for Adler, Adlerians have focused on educating parents and teachers because parents and teachers can shape the kind of experiences the child has in early childhood, and those experiences can lead to a healthy individual, which means the person 
can have experiences which are encouraging and give the person a strong sense of social interest and self-confidence. The kind of experiences that a child can have at an early age can lead to high resilience, empathy, and striving for cooperation rather than competition. These early experiences help shape the picture that the child creates and they describe what the child thinks she or he is like as a person and what the world around her or him is like, whether it's dangerous or friendly, whether it's supportive or alienating, a parent or teacher who implements Adlerian principles is likely to raise children who face life with courage and resilience, high social interest, and the child will draw conclusions that will help her or him deal relatively effectively with life and cope relatively well with obstacles. And I say relatively well because many things affect whether the child deals well with things, including the child's physical health, the child's skills and intelligence, and regardless of how skilled or intelligent the child is, life never promises to keep us safe at all times. Obstacles and difficulties are likely to occur somewhere along the line as the child grows into adulthood and then age. And no one has guarantees that life will always go smooth. So we have to say relatively effectively because complete effectiveness is not going to be possible at all times in the life of an individual. And each of us needs to understand that. The fact that these early experiences have such a profound influence on us in our childhood, adolescence, and adulthood, and old age is not always obvious to everybody. But for Adlerians, it's easy to identify what those experiences were and how they shaped the beliefs and conclusions that the child makes. Drikers could watch an interaction between parents and children for just a very short time, and you already could figure out what the child was thinking, how the child interpreted what was going on without the child having to say what the child thought, because Drikers had such a keen observation of the way children think and how they interpret the experiences that they have. And many books were written by Adlerians that help parents also to become good observers and know how to interpret what's going on so they see the world from the child's point of view as well as the point of view of the adult. Stepping in the shoes of the child so you understand what the child thinks helps you to help the child draw conclusions that are positive and resilient rather than that are discouraged and ineffective. Immediate goals may reflect common sense rather than private logic and lifestyle. And we need to remember that the term teleology has been used to refer to the principle that human actions are movements towards a goal. And this is a basic principle for Adlerans 
in discussing thinking, action, and emotions, all of which are goal-directed. When we enter a store, we have thoughts about what that store is like. Often, we have emotions, whether we like the store. And so those are all related to the goals we have at that moment. For example, we go to the refrigerator to find food when we're hungry and we don't eat when we feel full. And those are goals. The goal of going to the refrigerator or turning down food when it's offered, those are goal-directed behaviors. Many of our goals seem normal in the sense that most or all people would have the same goal under that situation. And so we can talk about normative behavior, normative emotions, normative thoughts, which are more in line with common sense and don't just reflect the private logic of the individual, but you can also have disturbance in these normative goals. So some people have emotional disturbance and eating disorder, and that kind of individual doesn't eat in terms of normative patterns. Such an individual may eat too little or too much, not in relationship to the amount of hunger the individual has, or how long since the person ate. And when you work with people who have eating disorders, you need to remember that if the individual follows behavior that doesn't follow a norm, you need to work with lifestyle. And every counselor needs to know the difference between what would be normal behavior and what would be private logic or thinking that the individual has, which isn't shared by the community. There are many goals we have that are in terms of common sense and in terms of norms from the community. We can cry under some circumstances and we can laugh under others. And that's not related to our lifestyle but to the nature of the situation in which we're in. If we see that people's actions and emotion lead them to difficulties, it's important to see if the goal for these acts and emotions are part of the lifestyle or if they're just part of the normal situation and not part of lifestyle. If it's part of lifestyle, we have to figure out how to help the individual change the lifestyle, which will change the immediate goal and action and emotion. There are many situations that have nothing to do with lifestyle because they're so part of the normal way that people in that culture would behave. If our lifestyle goal is to be admired and adored, most of the time, we may seek that goal when it's not productive to do so, when the cost of adoration or admiration is very high, when one loses the love and support of the people closest to us, for example. So a goal in our lifestyle to be admired and adored most of the time can get us into big trouble. What we have to do is change that goal. And if we see a counselor, an Adlerian counselor, the Adlerian counselor will help the client change that goal and help the client to behave in different ways and have different emotions, which are more productive and help the individual to live a balanced and creative and positive life. 
One of the things I learned working with strikers over the years was that we have to use measures for diagnosis that are appropriate for the topic because measures for diagnosing immediate goals are not the same as identifying lifestyle goals. He was sometimes quite amazed at how many counselors didn't know the difference and couldn't understand how to work with the different kinds of goals. Immediate goals, which may or may not be related to the lifestyle, can be identified by some measures. And one of them is dreams, which he said tend to reflect immediate goals and not necessarily reflect lifestyle. On the other hand, early recollections need to be correctly obtained. And if they are, they will reflect the lifestyle. Early recollections refer to events the client remembers clearly, including emotions that the client felt at the time of the event. And they need to be of an early age. People do not remember events when they were just a few months old because the brain doesn't process it the same way at a very early age as at a later time. So usually the early recollections go back to ages three, four, five, and six. And the individual gives several early recollections because what you want to see are the patterns that these recollections reveal. The early recollections give a picture of what the person has painted, what the ch person believes life is all about, what the person thinks is a way to be secure in the world. And it's a description of what the individual thinks is the nature of other people. And as a result, these patterns tend to persist. And the individual may or may not give the same recollections at age 20 or 40 or older. But the story that the recollections give will be the same because according to Adler, these early experiences and the core of personality remain throughout the life of the individual. And they are specific to that person. They're not normative. Although the norms of the culture may be seen in the early recollections also. Nevertheless, the way the individual interprets these norms is what counts when one's talking about lifestyle. So Dreikers use dreams to identify immediate goals and he used early recollections and family constellation and family dynamics as another source of information because family constellation and family dynamics reveal the world that the child lived in and therefore reveal how the child interprets what the world is like. If the child believes the world is made up of warring factions, it will be evident when the person describes family constellation and family dynamics, and each person has different stories about her or his early childhood family. One way to help identify 
lifestyle is to ask for an early recollection of the first day of school. Not everybody can remember that, but if they can, it's a great way to diagnose how the client faces new and unfamiliar situations. In some cases, the early recollection can show a feeling of triumph. I can take care of myself. I do not need parents or family to protect me. And in other cases, the early recollection can indicate a lot of timidity, a feeling afraid without the protection of family and parents. So if you can get an early recollection about the first day of school, that would be helpful, but that's not necessary. You can get other early recollections that give you insight about the way the individual sees the world and what life goal the individual is striving for. Immediate goals can be seen in certain kinds of behaviors. And dreams are good because they are a disguised way in which the person is saying what the goals are for the immediate situation, like the next day or the next week. If a client is struggling with certain problems that the client doesn't seem to be able to solve in the waking stage, sometimes in the sleep, it can come out what the client wants to achieve or what goal the client wants to attain or how the client wants to attain the goal. And it may or may not be related to lifestyle. It may be something quite simple, but it still is a goal that the person has in her or his immediate life. So dreams are very useful. And for Adlerians, it's different to interpret dreams than it is for Freudians. The psychoanalyst interprets dreams differently than the Adlerian. The Adlerian looks for social processes and a reflection of what the person strives for in the immediate situation. It's important to remember that if the person has immediate goals that the person is seeking solutions for, that in dreams that becomes a possible method of finding solutions to goals. And remember, early recollections tell a different story. They tell the story of how the individual wants to move through life. And family constellation also gives information which none of the other measures provide. Knowing which measure to use for which kind of goal is really important. And the choice of measures means you know what you're doing as a counselor in getting information that's crucial to the well being of the client. When we weave a story of our life, this guides the individual through happy or sad or troubling times. And within that story, there are also normative or common sense items. The uniqueness of the individual is revealed in the lifestyle of that individual, but it could be that common sense is also part of the lifestyle. If the individual has a lot of resilience and a lot of courage, it could be that 
there are many common sense aspects in that lifestyle. When someone comes for psychotherapy or counseling, the client usually understands that she or he has to change her or his lifestyle. The client will say, things are not working well. I can't seem to hold on to relationships. I can't seem to keep my job and so on. The client doesn't know anything about lifestyle. So the counselor needs to help in that understanding. Dreiker said, in order to understand an individual, you need to know what the crisis is that led the person to come to the counselor or therapist. Usually, some crisis has, and the person doesn't know how to handle it. I wrote an article that was in the Journal of Projective Techniques that described a client that I had worked with in a psychiatric institution. And the crisis that the person encountered was getting married. He had no symptoms of any psychosis or disturbance until the close proximity to his wedding. And then he suddenly developed a serious case of psychosis and his early recollections and family constellation revealed his problem. He had been the youngest in a large family, and there was always someone to take care of him and to help him with whatever difficulties he had. And the prospect of getting married was very terrifying because he was going to have to deal with his problems on his own. He would move away from his parents and siblings, and he wouldn't be able to rely on them to help him. He wasn't aware that that was the problem. But when I interviewed him and got his early recollections and family constellation and family dynamics, it was clear to me what his problem was and why the crisis that led to his extreme pathology was in fact the short arrival of his wedding and he was able to escape the wedding with all his symptoms because the psychiatric hospital I was working in was not at Larian. I have no idea whether the person with whom he was working for therapy was able to help him. But an Adlerian counselor would have worked with him on his feeling of inadequacy when alone and would help him by encouraging him to feel capable and strong and not afraid and to see marriage not as a way of having conflict, but as a way of having intimacy that's positive and reassuring. And I don't know whether the counselor or therapist that he had later helped him with that. All I know is it was clear to me when I interviewed him that his lifestyle as a frightened little boy who needed others to take care of him was causing him severe anxiety at a time when he was afraid that he couldn't handle whatever was coming on his own for people who encounter crises and who get help from an Adlerian counselor or therapist. There's much hope because the counselor and therapist will give a lot of encouragement and will help the person recognize what kinds of mistaken ideas the person has. Mistakes in the sense that when one gets married, one doesn't have to have crises. One doesn't have to have conflicts. One can have cooperation and mutual support and trust. Adler thought of psychotherapy as education, helping the client to learn new ways of thinking, which will be positive 
and productive. And the hope for all humans is that they have early child experiences that will help them to have high courage, high social interest, and genuine concern for the well being of humans over the globe to have courage to meet the tasks of life, which Adler described for each person, to be able to work and work effectively, to have love relationships with intimacy and sharing, and to have friendships with sharing. All of us know people who do not have the courage to love and have long-term intimacy. And this is happening increasingly in our modern age, which appears to foster individualism and competition rather than community and cooperation. So we can look at social troubles at a given time in society, and we can recognize that some of those troubles are faulty learning that in childhood, the children didn't have experiences that taught them to have courage and social interest and to think about the well-being of others. The more individualistic our families are and the more they help the child to want to be a winner all the time, the more difficult it becomes for people to learn cooperation and trust. And each one of us can make a difference in how we live our lives and how we help our fellow human beings lead their lives. I hope I've helped you understand the difference between lifestyle goals and everyday goals that are not related to lifestyle. And I hope I've helped you understand what measures Adlerian counselors and therapists use to identify the goals and to help the client change those goals. Many people have a lot of problems with anger and frustration, and they don't realize that anger and frustration come about because of the goals the individual has. And Adlerian counselors can help us change those goals so we're not so angry and frustrated so we can learn to live harmoniously and productively. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope I gave you some new ideas for us to discuss. All my best wishes to everybody. Bye-bye.